Welcome to Bucket of Bolts, everybody. And today we're doing a product review on the Launch CRP123 OBD Diagnostic Scanner. Now there's a lot of confusion with these scanners because there are four different models. CRP123 version one, version two, version E, and version X. Today I'll cover the basics when it comes to version one, E, and X so that you understand the differences between them. And we'll go in depth on version 2.0 of the original model. First and foremost, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. And if you love this video, give it a like. It helps me create more content. The first thing we're gonna cover off is the difference between version 1.0 and version 2.0 of the CRP123. In version 1.0, you had access to the four main systems, engine, SRS, transmission, and ABS. There was very limited sub-module diagnostic, which means that in the version 2.0, they've now unlocked that where it says all systems. So you'll see here right on the main photo, it shows you subsystems like the driver door electronics, navigation, seat adjustment. Although you were able to access some of this in version 1.0, it was very limited to which vehicles it was available for. In version 2.0, you have a greater list of supported vehicles. For example, in many European vehicles, you can go into sub-modules and read data streams, fault codes, and do graphing for certain sub-modules like, for example, if you wanted to look at your left rear window. You could do so using the version 2.0, but not version 1.0. So if you're in the market for the CRP123 as a budget OBD scanner, version 2.0 is the one you want to go with. Fortunately, that is what we're reviewing today. I'll go in depth with this scanner so you understand its capabilities. And now you're going, well, bucket of bolts, man. I don't understand the difference between 1, 2, E, X. And so launch likes to confuse us. So now we're going to talk about the difference between the CRP123 E and CRP123 X. Now this is still the same scanner. The difference is now you've got a scanner that has a five inch touch screen that's got a 6100 milliamp internal battery, which means you don't need to plug into a vehicle to turn this on. You don't need to plug into a computer to turn this on. They are both standalone. It also runs a newer version of Android, Android 7.0, and it's got increased memory capacity for both which means it runs faster and more efficiently. Now, what's the difference between the other scanners we just looked at? The difference is this gives you reset capability. You get three reset functions with both of these scanners. Oil reset, which means when you change your oil, you can reset that light. You get steering angle position reset, and you also get throttle reset. Three resets, it's pretty limited. But that being said, if those functions are what you need, this is the scanner to go with. The CRP123X. This one has, again, greater sub-module sub availability compared to the 123E. This is an older version. You'll see here it says 2023, and this is the newest version, 2024. However, they both really, really perform almost the exact same functions. This, you get a little bit more sub-modules that allows you to really dive deep into the diagnostic, especially for European vehicles. So if you're in the market for a CRP123 and you want the three reset functions, this is the scanner to go with. It is a much better option. Now you understand the difference between version 1.0, version 2.0, version E, and version X. Something you need to know is that all four of these scanners offer a lifetime update for the software. The difference between version 1 and 2, again, they need to be updated via computer, and version X and E can be updated right from the device itself over Wi-Fi. They all carry a five-year warranty from launch. Now I've got the version 2.0 in my hand, and why do I like this product? Well, I don't need the three reset functions because they are very limited. Three resets for oil, steering angle, and throttle position, that's not enough. If you're looking for reset functions, you're better off buying a scanner that is more capable. Spend more money, get more functions. So I've got version 2.0. This is a perfect DIY scanner for the at-home garage, or on-the-go scanner that you can keep in your vehicle. It's cheap, and it does all the diagnostics that you need. Comes with a nice manual, and this is what comes in the box. You've got the actual scanner, 
Version 2.0 is definitely better looking than version 1.0. Buttons have nice feedback. We've got a cable to connect to the vehicle and the OBD itself. We've got a USB, which allows us to connect to the computer and power this on. And last but not least, you've got a USB adapter so that you can take out the micro SD, plug this into your computer and update the software. Because as you recall, this device must be updated through the computer. I'm powered up now using a USB. And what we've got here on the home screen is diagnose, settings and help. Settings is very basic. You've got language, unit of measure, beeper, which is for these buttons and record mode, which is recording what it is you scanned. Now let's go to diagnose because that's what you and I are interested in. The first option is OBD2 eOBD. Now that is your basic function of OBD scanning. That's what any cheap OBD scanner can do. That's the four main functions, SRS, ABS, transmission, and airbag. Very basic scanning functionality. It has nothing to do with the individual vehicle or the sub modules. That is the second option. Now this allows you to go into the individual vehicle and the sub modules that are applicable. If we click on it, you'll see now you can select the vehicle make. I'll go down the list so you know what is supported. Let's say we click on Volkswagen. And now you can actually do a system selection. And you'll see now that you're given all of the sub modules pertaining to that vehicle. And as I mentioned, the version 2.0 of the CRP 123 gives you greater sub options and greater sub modules. There's quite a list. Now I'm not connected to a vehicle. However, if you were to go into any of these sub modules, You'll then have the ability to graph live data. You'll be able to look at fault codes and you'll able to look at the data stream. And that is a wrap in terms of the functionality for the launch CRP 123 version 2.0. Do I recommend this product? First things first, you got to like and subscribe to the channel bucket of bolts so I can continue to make more content for you. The simple answer to that is yes. At $240 Canadian, this scanner is pretty capable in terms of looking at sub modules, especially for European vehicles, which is what I work on most. It's a great capable scanner. It's not bi-directional. It doesn't have reset function, but if you're just looking for fault codes and being able to understand and graph live data, this is an excellent tool for the DIYer or the home garage. First things first, you gotta like, subscribe, leave a comment, and then I'll answer you.